Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station. You know where we are if you're with us now, but tell your friends who may not know where we are that they may join us as well if they're interested in changing their lives, living a better life, having more vitality, more energy, feel better, and reduce all the aches and pains and the health issues you have in a very short period of time. It's not a miracle. It's just the body recovering when you take the right strides to treat it right. The right nutrition, the right exercise, the right amount of sleep. All these things go in to create a new healthy body rejuvenated so that you have a quality of life that you can enjoy. And we have a great lineup of products today, as always. If you have, like, needles and pins in your fingers and toes, if you have burning feet, the numbing of your feet, I see some older people, they can't even step one step ahead of the other. They're shuffling because they can't feel their feet. True, they can't feel their feet. They're so numb and they burn and you have numbing and tingling of the toes and fingers like needles and pins. That's our subject today. We're going to talk about how you can get rid of neuropathy. And then we're also going to be talking about the benefits of berries. Berries are one of the healthiest foods we can consume. I consume more berries than vegetables. They have a lot more nutritional value, especially for metabolic syndrome. Well, what is metabolic syndrome? Have you heard of that before? Well, we'll explain that here. And here's a new study on frankincense oil. Frankincense oil. A brand new study. That comes from the tree known as Boswellia. And then you know what? Food is getting more, less nutritious. Our food no longer contains the level of nutrients that it did years ago. Not just that they're taking it out, it just does not have the amount of nutrients, vitamins and minerals in our food today that was there once several decades ago. Getting ready for vacation, well, what do you need to know how to take care of your health when you're traveling? And here, I like this one. Here is how you can add 10 years, 10 years to your life. Oh, I know what you're saying. Oh, my God, the way I feel today, I don't want to live another 10 years. I ache so bad. I got so much pain. I don't want to live any more than 10 years. Oh, I, I don't, don't, don't grant me and bless me with 10 more years the way I feel. Yeah, but you're going to feel a whole lot better. And that's what we're talking about all the time. You can change your health in a matter of months. The body is so forgiving, but you have to do the right thing. And that's why we try to call out the right things we should be doing to prevent diseases, to prevent ill health, to prevent cold and flu. But if you have like you feel like your body is riddled with bullets. You're just falling apart. You can change that. Three to six months. But you have to make some changes. You have to dump some of the food you're eating. You have to stop eating the amount of carbohydrates that most Americans consume today. And no sugar. 
No sugar. Have you ever had dry mouth? Well, some drugs cause dry mouth. Some diseases cause dry mouth. And some people are just not hydrated enough, so they have dry mouth. Some people get up in the morning and they can hardly say a word because their mouth is so dry. Well, first of all, they sleep with their mouth open. They're mouth breathers. And that dries the mouth out. Wine dries the mouth out. Coffee dries the mouth out. Tea. So what can you do about dry mouth? And there is a huge connection between your blood sugar level, which I think will be high, and Alzheimer's disease, which now some experts call the diabetes 3, Alzheimer's disease, or dementia. There are many, many ways to have dry mouth. and dementia. So do you have burning feet? Very common as we get older. There's a weakness, numbness, tingling and pain, often described as burning feet. Well, they're all signs of nerve damage. And the condition is called peripheral neuropathy. And almost all forms of of peripheral neuropathy are often associated with diabetes. If you're type 2 diabetes or type 1, you may have neuropathy. Sugar is bad. Sugar causes more damage in our body than many other foods. I shouldn't call them foods, junk, that we're taking in and we classify it as food. It fills our belly. It stops the growling in our stomach. And it gives us some some energy for a little while and then we crash. But 60 to 70% of people with diabetes, may have some sort of nerve damage. All done by sugar. Sugar is not innocent. And we consume so much sugar in the American diet. I've said this many times before, but just for those that are maybe joining us for the first time, in the early 1900s, The average consumption of sugar per individual per year was like four to six pounds of sugar. Still a lot. But today, and I've seen various reports on sugar, but it's somewhere in the range of 200 to 250 pounds of sugar per individual per year. That's a long, long ways from the early 1900s when it was four to six pounds. Now it's up to 200 pounds or more. I don't eat any sugar. So based this on a national average, somebody's eating my sugar and maybe your sugar. But if you could eliminate sugar. Now it's not just the sugar that you find in the sugar bowl. It's all the sugar that's added to food to make it taste is that better or sweet and to addict you to the food that manufacturers are putting out on the market today. But all the carbohydrates, bread, pasta, pizza, all the dough, flour, grains, however they're used, cakes, pies, pretzels, crackers, 
all those grain products are called carbohydrates. But in order for us to metabolize the carbohydrates in our body, they're all converted to sugar. It's additional sugar in our diet that you wouldn't think is sugar, but it becomes sugar in our body. So lower your carbohydrates if you want better health. An American diet is about 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates daily. Daily. And it should be somewhere about 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrates daily. And you know, this condition called burning feet or numbness, peripheral neuropathy, is often associated with the elderly today. And the number one cause of death in the elderly is a fall. They fall down, hurt themselves severely, maybe break a bone, and 50% of the elderly that fall will die within the year. They don't recover. Some falls are so traumatic that they never recover after they have fallen. Now the complications of diabetic neuropathy. People with neuropathy have a five five times increased risk of falling. And 90% of diabetic foot ulcers are associated with diabetic neuropathy. Now, if you have high blood sugar, that causes nerve damage and other kinds of damage as well. But we're concentrating here on peripheral neuropathy and high blood sugar. Why? Well, high blood sugar is very irritating to the nerves. But the why is not really fully understood. But why do we have high blood sugar? You know, type 2 diabetes is optional. You don't have to take part in having type 2 diabetes. If the diet doctor was going to diagnose you after taking blood, oh, you have way too much sugar in your blood. Well, where did it come from? Came from the table. Came from sitting down eating. Came from eating too many carbohydrates, too much sugar. And the body can't handle that level of sugar. The body doesn't make enough insulin to take care of all that sugar. Some of the sugar is stored as fat. Fats don't make us fat. Protein does not make us fat. In fact, those two, fat and protein, will cause us to become lean with a healthy body. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, convert to sugar. So we're constantly eating sugar. So what it really is important is keeping the blood sugar levels down can prevent nerve damage. But once the damage has occurred, it is very difficult to reverse. But it can be done. But it takes time. But you can, like I said, the body is very forgiving. You can recover from many healthy, unhealthy conditions. And you might only get better. But why not get better? It's better than going the other way and getting more unhealthy. And the earlier you start, 
taking action to lower the blood sugar and treat the damaged nerves, the results will be better. So how do you ease painful nerves? Well, there are three areas which I believe must be addressed. Circulation, proper blood flow, carries nutrients and oxygen to the nerves. We're, de we're dealing with nerve damage, all because of eating so much sugar, so many carbohydrates, so much junk food, all the flour that is used in making pasta, pizza, bread, or whatever, is refined and processed. There's no nutritional value. All the vitamins and minerals have been taken out. So that white flour can last on the shelf for an indefinite period of time. Circulation. And then inflammation. Inflammation plays a significant role in the development and progression of nerve damage. And then repair of the nerves and the sheath that covers the nerve, like we have electrical wires. But we don't have bare electrical wires. We have a covering. Maybe it's a rubber coating or some kind of a coating on the electrical wires so nothing touches them and causes a short. And this covering, called sheath, S-H-E-A-T-H, the myelin, Sheath covers the nerves. Now you can repair the nerves to the best of our ability. If you're younger and if you just have had the damage for a short period of time, it's easier. If you're older and you've had the damage for a long period of time, it's going to take more time to recover and repair. But here's an idea that works very, very well. A combination of B vitamins, the active B vitamins. They don't need to go through a conversion in the body to become activated. They are bioactive. And zinc, chromium, both minerals have a tremendous effect on controlling blood sugar levels. And then alpha-lipoic acid. Alpha-lipoic acid is a nutrient that is prescribed in Germany to diabetics. In some reports, they say it completely reverses diabetes. Now, the bioactive B vitamins, why are these so crucial? Well, all B vitamins have to go through the liver to be activated, to be converted into the biologically active forms. There's a few of them that don't require that. So they're already called bioactive. They go right to work. And the benefits are, of course, no liver conversion is required, increased nitric oxide, which expands the blood vessels, and improves blood flow, blood circulation. If we can't get blood to a certain part of the body, it's going to wither and die. Blood is the lifeblood of our body. It carries oxygen, carries all the nutrients, carries the vitamins and minerals. It's like the plumbing system in your house. You have a lot of pipes. They're in the kitchen, they're in the bathroom, outside, wherever they are. You turn the faucet on, water comes out. There's piping for that. We have piping in our body for blood, called the arteries and veins. And when you improve the blood circulation and you increase nitric oxide, which, expand, which expands blood vessels, 
It reduces the nerve pain and allows the nerve healing to occur. Now, that might take three, four weeks. That might take two, three months. Depends on how bad off you are, how much damage you already have done, how bad your diet is, because unless you change the best medicine in the world, food is your best medicine in the world, unless you change that, you're never going to get healthy. The American diet causes inflammation. More people die from eating the American diet. So you want to reduce nerve pain and allow that process so the body can heal itself. So what do you look for in the form of B vitamins? Well, what is called methylcobalamin. That is vitamin B12. It's the most effective form of B12 in treating nerve pain. Essential for nerve repair and regeneration. Shown in clinical trials to ease nerve pain, tingling, burning associated with neuropathy. That is one of the B vitamins. Another B vitamin is vitamin B6. Now, you don't want to take just any vitamin B6 because vitamin B6 can actually make more damage to the nerves if you take too much. But you want to take one that's called P5P. That's the biologically active form of vitamin B6. And it reduces nerve pain. There's no side effects. You can't take too much but you can take too much B6. This is a special form of B6. And it's shown to prevent progression of nerve damage associated with diabetes. Some companies still use folic acid. Some vitamin supplements still use folic acid. Folic acid has never been found in nature. It's not a natural substance. You want folate, not folic acid. Folate. F-O-L-A-T-E. Folate. And it should be methylfolate. And it reduces heart disease. And by reducing homeocysteine. Because homeocysteine interferes with nitric oxide. Slows the blood down. Prevents free flowing of the blood, causes poor circulation. So, you want to reduce homeocysteine so the blood has all the nutrients it needs, all the heart needs, the heart needs all those nutrients. So, you want to inhibit or stop homeocysteine production because it interferes with nitric oxide activity. Now, this specific combination, three B vitamins, just get this. You're suffering from neuropathy. You may not call it neuropathy, but you're suffering from tingling and numbing of the fingers and toes. You have burning feet You shuffle when you walk because you can't feel your feet. They're so numb. Those are the signs of neuropathy caused by sugar and the large consumption of sugar. Now, this combination, bioactive vitamin Bs like methylcobalamin, P5P, and methylfolate, those three B vitamins, when used in clinical trials with humans, it reduced nerve pain by almost 90%. 90%. Then you can also combine this with other B vitamins, such as B1, B2, biotin, 
niacin, pentothenic acid. And then add zinc and chromium. Diabetes is frequently associated with low zinc and chromium levels. Zinc supplements have been shown to improve blood sugar control. Chromium is very effective at reducing blood sugar levels by increasing the effectiveness of insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas to regulate and, and metabolize sugar. But we eat far too much sugar for the level of insulin that's produced in the body. So you could say we are insulin deficient. But the body regulates that. But we, we don't care. We just eat too much darn sugar. And then the insulin can't respond. And then the cells of our body build up a resistance to insulin. Insulin resistance. And additionally, chromium reduces inflammation associated with diabetes. Alpha-lipoic acid, it's a very powerful antioxidant that is both fat and water-soluble. You don't find many like that in nutrition. Shown to lower blood sugar levels in people with diabetes. And it's regularly used in Germany to treat diabetic neuropathy. And it's shown to clinical trials to reduce symptoms of neuropathy and slow its progression. So to reduce the symptoms of neuropathy, take about 600 milligrams of alpha-lipoic acid with the additional vitamins and minerals, and you will feel so much better. Get rid of that neuropathy. Get rid of how you feel, and you'll feel much, much better. I've got to take a break here. Listen to the commercials, and I'll come right back. Don't go away. I'm going to be here. This is Terry Nashley with Terry Talks Nutrition. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Nashley with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're going to be here to the top of the hour. So stay with us. We have a lot more coming your way. A lot more information that you can use to be healthy, happy, have more vitality, less exhaustion, less fatigue. You can do it all. You can do it all. Nobody else. Doctors are not going to change your life. Drugs don't change your life. In fact, they cause more side effects, more damage. They're there to save lives, but they have no value nutritionally. They're not going to make your body healthier. Doctors don't make you healthy. They don't know what health is. They don't even know how to treat themselves and their family nutritionally. But we have a lot more on this side of the program to share with you, to give you additional information to be healthy and happy. Now, I mentioned metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? Well, it's a cluster of conditions, five, like five different conditions that many, many Americans have today. And if you have three of those five, they classify you as having metabolic syndrome. So the conditions for metabolic syndrome, having a low HDL cholesterol, that's the good cholesterol. Having a low level is not good for you. So that's one of the criteria based on whether or not you have metabolic syndrome. High triglycerides, bad for the heart. Obesity, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar levels. Those five are part of what we call the metabolic syndrome. And one in three Americans have this condition. About 100 million people have what is called 
metabolic syndrome. That means they are obese or way overweight. That means they have a very low HDL. They have high triglycerides. They have high blood pressure and high blood sugar levels. Now, all the berries have evidence for addressing the symptoms of metabolic syndrome. Berries, blackberry, blueberry, all of the berries. But one special berry, which is really one of my top favorite berries of all. It's the healthiest berry of all. And all berries will have some evidence for addressing the symptoms of metabolic syndrome. Now the berry, to me, that stands out as the super berry is called aronia berry. That's spelled A-R-O-N-I-A, aronia. Aronia berry. In studies with the aronia berry, the studies were associated with the best benefits for cholesterol, as well as reducing triglycerides and other inflammatory markers. Just to give you an idea, when consuming aronia berries daily, often, it caused a 10% reduction in blood pressure levels. Nearly a 15% reduction in triglycerides. So an intake of berries may be an important factor in decreasing the risk of metabolic syndrome. I was so taken by the research. In fact, it goes back almost 25 years. People today don't even know aronia berry in the United States, but it will become more evident as time goes by. But 25 years ago, when I was touring Europe and going to trade shows and conferences and medical seminars, I would continue to run into companies Selling aronia berry. Juices. Jams and jellies. And the berry. And the berry extract in capsules. So I started doing research way back then. And I was so taken back by it. And I kept talking about aronia berry. Well, a very dear friend bought me 10 aronia bushes for my birthday, and I planted them, and the bushes were just full of the berries. The branches were bending over to the ground. They were so heavy laden with aronia berries. Now, I must admit, they're not the best tasting berry. They're a tart berry. They kind of make your mouth pucker up. You know, if you drink a glass of red wine, and it's a dry wine, it kind of makes your mouth dry. And to me, it makes me have a little fuzzy head when I drink dry wine. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of dry, dry wines. I like a little bit more fruity wine. But the aronia berry has a tart taste. And it's hard to sit down and eat a bowl of aronia berries. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the only way you could eat a, a bowl of aronia berries with a lot of sugar. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen in my life, and I hope it doesn't happen in your life. But I take in a cup of aronia berries every day in my smoothie, my protein drink. I had just a touch of water, throw in a cup of aronia berries frozen, and other things as well. And I usually have that almost every day. 
I'd like at least a cup of berries. They're the most healthiest berry of all other berries. Not the best tasting, but the healthiest of all berries. Now, it gives tremendous benefits. As I mentioned before, a 10% reduction in blood, sugar, blood pressure levels. A 15% reduction in triglycerides. Triglycerides are fats that are made from carbohydrates and sugar. And that's what damages the heart, not cholesterol. That is a bunch of hogwash. We can't live without cholesterol. We can live very, very well without triglycerides. So the intake of berries may be an important factor in decreasing the risk of metabolic syndrome. And that really gives your heart a healthy start. I was so taken back with those 10 bushes of berries. They were right down to the ground with branches so full of those berries. And they're, they're a big berry, a little bit, little bit bigger than a blueberry. Not a wild blueberry, they're small. But uh, the domestic blueberries, they're quite large. And these berries are purple. They're so purple, they're an intense black. Now I have about 150 bushes in the lot next to my house. And it's loaded with berries. Not yet. Too early in the season. But along come September and October, those bushes will be laden with berries. Now, many farmers, and I find this to be true in Iowa, Nebraska, are planting huge acres of aronia berries. It's a better crop than corn. Much more financial sound in terms of growing the berries for sale, for juices, for concentrates, for paste, for jams, for jellies. Aronia berry is going to be a well-known berry in time. All right, let's talk a little bit about frankincense oil. What do we know about frankincense oil? Well, for one, based on a new study that just came out, for better memory. Studies included men and women, 50 years or older, diagnosed with, already diagnosed, with Alzheimer's disease. Half of those 50 year, year and older men and women were treated with an herbal combination with frankincense oil plus a small amount of additional herbs including lemon balm and cinnamon and half received a placebo for three months. When the mental status scores from the beginning and the end of the study were compared, the treatment group had improved 11% and the placebo group that were taking a fake pill that looked like the real pill, they declined by 15%. So more people taking the placebo dropped out due to side effects than left the treatment group. So the researchers said in conclusion, in this relatively short time period, the herbal formulation with frankincense oil improved test scores for orientation, delayed recall, Language and confirms testing using animal models of dementia. That frankincense oil improves learning, memory, as well as reducing infl inflammation and the inflammatory process in the brain. Frankincense oil for a better memory. 
better mental function, and a reduction of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Now, how can food be less nutritious? Organic really is healthier. Organic food. I know it's a stretch of the budget to buy organic. But there, maybe you can make part of your diet organic. And depends on your budget. But based on a well-known study from 2004 on the nutritional value of food, the researchers reported that key nutrients in fruits and vegetables and grains declined by as much as 38% since the 1950s. So we're eating food that has less nutrients than ever before. And not much has changed since that study. Crops today are cultivated for fast growth, high yield and sprayed with toxins, poisons, pesticides, fungicides. So the American diet is calorie rich and nutrient poor. Modern food looks good and delivers a lot of calories, but it is lacking in the nutrients it once had. They did a research on oranges. They compared the orange nutritional value of several decades ago to today. To today. Our great grandparents ate an orange. That orange had nutrients, vitamins and minerals, bioflavonoids, polyphenols. Today, looking at the oranges that are grown today, we'd have to consume eight oranges to get the same nutritional value as the grandparents, great-grandparents ate one orange. Now we would have to eat eight oranges to equal one orange that was grown several decades ago. Based on the levels of vitamin C, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, anthocyanins, and have a higher antioxidant activity and less contamination with toxins than conventionally grown food. We're getting more bang for our buck. We can't see those things. We can't see those nutrients. So when we eat an orange, we think, wow, orange is good for us. Not nearly as good as the orange that our great-grandparents ate. And this is a trend. It's going to be less nutrients every year. There's nothing put back in the soil. And we take out so many vitamins and minerals, which even makes it more daunting. So we have to be very careful of what we consume to make sure we're getting our best return on our investment. If you can buy organic, buy organic. Or make some foods your organic. You're going to get more nutrients. And more nutrients just equals better health. There weren't supplements a million years ago. There weren't drugs a million years ago. But those survived on the food being the best medicine. Food that made up of all of the nutrients, vitamins and minerals, and all the polyphenols, all the good things that we need to be healthy. We're getting foods that are less and less valuable for our health. Not only are we eating the wrong food, but even if you try to eat a good diet, it's still not there. We have to get farmers and the big 
farming community to start looking at the soil. And there are some out there, and they're the ones that are selling the better crops that will make us more healthy overall. So look for organic if you can. Now, are you going on vacation soon? Oh, that'd be nice. Where are you going to go? Have you thought it out yet? What do you want to do? Lots of golf? Lots of laying on the beach? Want to go to some amusement parks? Well, did you think of what you need when you're traveling? Now, first of all, when I travel, I pack my supplements for a daily use. I have a little food grade uh, packets that I fill with my supplements for each meal. So I pack my supplements, that's the first thing. But then you have to think about other things as well. Will you or your family have an upset stomach? Eating non-familiar foods or more food than you are used to, well, you kind of pig out when you're on vacation, right? Most people do. And that can cause bloating, indigestion, unfamiliar foods. So take a shelf-stable probiotic daily to keep digestion running smoothly. Now, any travel, even though you're going on a vacation and you're going to kick back and chill out, any travel can be stressful. So therefore, you might want to take echinacea and gustifolia. No, not the one that's for cold and flu. Any echinacea is good for cold and flu, and it works. I use it often. But there is a very unique combination of nutrients in echinacea called alchemites. And researchers in Budapest have been successful in extracting the alchemites, not the polysaccharides. The polysaccharides are the ingredients that stop cold and flu. The alchemides are a quick relief for anxiety. Just 20 to 40 milligrams twice daily for quick relief of anxiety. And for kids, too. You can use this for kids over four years of age. So for anxiety, make your travel less stressful. And what about sleep issues? Well, melatonin is one of my favorites. I swear by it. And melatonin affects every cell in our body. It's a very powerful antioxidant, very powerful anti-inflammatory. Melatonin is so superior in many ways. And it can help with jet lag and sleep disruptions. So take 5 to 10 milligrams of extended release. And the reason why I say extended release is because common melatonin has a half-life of 35 to 45 minutes. Some nutrients have up to 24 hours. Melatonin has a very, very short half-life. So it's gone in minutes. But if you take one that is a tablet called a extended release or a sustained release, and you take that about dusk at sunset, when the day is starting to get shorter, and now you can see the dark time of the night coming about, that's when melatonin works. Some say an hour to one to two hours before sleeping. That's okay too. But if you go to bed at midnight, or you're getting home at midnight and you're taking it, it's too late. Melatonin works when it gets dark. And then you have to worry about immune function when you're traveling. Cold and flu, infection, bacteria, funguses, all the things that can happen, viral infections, bacterial infections, fungal infections. 
My favorite is 400 milligrams of andrographis that is standardized to 80 milligrams of the andrographolides daily to prevent bacterial and viral infections. But also, too, I'd like to include 100 milligrams of chewable propolis. The chewable propolis is great for kids as well. Kids four years and older. But any size child, there are no side effects. Propolis is made up of vegetation. The vegetation that surrounds the area of where the bees are. They go out and collect all the sap, resin, and the polyphenols that are found in leaves and buds and shrubs and whatever. So propolis is a vegetation that grows around wherever the bees are collecting their food. And then sunburn prevention. Calcium lactate, a very special form of calcium that is primarily concentrated in the soft tissue of the body, the skin, the soft tissue of the body, not the bone. And calcium lactate can help protect against sunburn damage and muscle cramps from being out in the sun all day. When you're out in the sun all day, you have a chance of really sun burning. Sun burning or burning of the skin is damage to the skin, oxidative damage. And then the sun takes out all the calcium, only one or two percent of the calcium that's in the body is outside of the bone. It's in the soft tissue of the body. So when we lose that calcium because of the sun, we can burn more, has more, much more damage, and can make us more, actually people get sick from, from sun poisoning. It's good to be out in the sun, I love it, and we do need the sun, can't live without it. But when you're out there without any protection, and yes, if you want to use a sunscreen, but some of those sunscreens have more damage too. But calcium lactate is perfect. I had one lady tell me that this woman was as white as could be and as blonde as could be, and she was going down to Mexico with her family, and she just didn't know what to do. So I suggested calcium lactate. And she did all the while she was in Mexico. There was about 30 family members that went down to Mexico. They all got sunburned. She did not at all. It works fantastically. You want to add 10 years to your life? Well, I have about a minute and 20 seconds to tell you how you can live 10 more years. And I know you want to. And you want to live it well and good. Cut sugar out of your diet. That's it. And you'll live longer. Researchers at the University of California divided mice into three groups. First group ate the same amount of total daily calories, but the food sources were different. Group one ate mostly carbohydrates, sugar. Group two ate low carbohydrates, high fat diet. Group three ate a ketogenic diet. Results, the mice in groups two and three live 13% longer than the mice in group one. So that's equivalent to seven to 10 years more for a human being, as you extrapolate it from a mouse. Additionally, the mice on the ketogenic diet had significantly reduced risk of cancer, heart disease, and all the other diseases as well. So a high protein diet, primarily an animal protein diet, seafood, beef, bison, lamb, pork, whatever. Very, very, very low carbohydrates. You'll live better, you'll live longer, you'll live healthier, and you'll have a mental capacity that equals a 20-year-old. That, my friends, I'm all out of time. I've got to run, but say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. Uh, God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.